morning. It's another session of Cascadia's mu music theory course. Uh, I want to send out uh, a word of thanks to Cascadia and Rebecca and all the board and everybody for keeping these coming to you. We have two more sessions after today. And today's subject uh, is called chords and progressions. So you all know what chord progressions are. It's when chords move from one to another. If you've played in bands or if you, you can hear it in music. Um, that's what we're going to talk about today. You know that in major keys, as well as minor, uh, every key has three major chords, three minor chords, and one diminished chord. In uh, the major key, um, our first chord, well, in both, in both major and minor, the first chord is called tonic, the fourth chord is called subdominant, and the fifth note, fifth chord is called dominant. That's what we're going to focus on today. Um, what you see here is a blues progression. Uh, you've heard blues a million times, so you know what it sounds like. But this is kind of a shorthand version that you can plug into uh, any key very easily. The one means tonic, that's the first chord in the key. The four is the subdominant, that's the fourth chord. And down here, the five, the Roman numeral five, is the dominant or the fifth chord. In the blues progression, we uh, have 12 bars. One, two, three, four times three, there's our 12 bar, 12 bar blues. Blues can be played in any number of measures, but this is the standard form. Um, this little sign means repeat the last measure. So what we have is the tonic chord for one measure and the second measure, and then we move to the subdominant chord and then back to the tonic chord. We come back to the four chord and play it for two measures, back to the one chord for two measures, the five chord for two measures. Sometimes this comes back to a four, it's kind of a variation, and back to the tonic chord, and sometimes this has comes back to the five, particularly in its seventh form. So if we're in the key of C, for example, we plug in a C chord here. Here we plug in an F chord, back to the C, F chord, back to the C, G chord, back to the C, and maybe a G7. But say you want to go to a different key, you don't want to play in the key of C, you find your new scale, say that you want to play in the key of B flat. Horn players like to play in the flat keys. So we start out with the B flat chord. What's our four chord in the B key of B flat? It's the fourth note of the scale. So that's our E flat, B, C, D, E. There we go. Back to our B flat here. We'll make that an E flat right here, back to a B flat. And our five chord is an F, coming back to a B flat. So this, this kind of a progression, writing out your, um, your chords with Roman numerals, or your progressions with Roman numerals, is very useful. Let's just do a little talking about the tendencies of chords. The one chord is very flexible. It can pretty much go anywhere. Doesn't matter what chord it goes to. Let's say it goes to an F chord. Oops. Let's say, let's say it goes to a four chord. Now the four chord has its own tendencies. It easily goes to five but it also easily goes back to one. Say the one chord goes to a two. The two chord easily goes to four. Uh, and the two chord sometimes also goes to six. So you see how flexible these chords are. Say, what if the one chord went to a five chord? Five, of course, very strongly goes back to one. That's the strongest motion. The five can also descend to four. 
And five can also easily go up to six. Or, interestingly, seven, because they're so similar. The five chord and the seven chord are very similar. Uh, let's say the one chord goes here to a three chord. The three is, is a little bit more, has a tendency to move strongly up to four. Three doesn't easily go to five. Three can easily go to six. But I've just made this map here because it's, uh, it's good to think about when you're trying to find a chord, say you're working on a song that you're writing, and you're trying to find the next chord, um, just experiment systematically with all the chords that are native to the key. And now comes the fun part, which when I learned this, it was one of the big light bulb moments of my whole music learning experience. I became a, a working musician before I went to college. So I had played in a lot of bands and I traveled around and done a lot of different things. And, and so my music was, uh, was not from book learning, except to learn to play the piano, of course. But uh, so you, you, you have these revelations about, oh, I get that. Um, say we have a progression that goes from one, to four, and I'm not even measuring out the number of beats or the number of measures. I'm not parsing out measures right now. I'm just talking about movement from one to, an, one to another. Uh, from one to four, to five, to one, and then say we go to a two, and we go to a four, five, and then back to one. So I'm just going to play this out on the piano a little bit. So that's a real churchy version. I could play a bluesy version, but that get, that makes, makes the point. My point here, um, I'm really running out of chalk. This, this is a minor chord. This chord can be made really, really strong by turning it into a major chord. Thank you. I will take a new piece of chalk. If you turn this into a major chord, in this case, it would become an up. Let's, let's add some chords in here. C, F, G, C, D minor. G, C. Let's turn this into a major chord. It's going to sound like this. strong this D becomes when the minor chord becomes major. This is called a secondary dominant. You'll remember from the week of diminished and augmented intervals how strong the augmented fourth is when it resolves and how strong the diminished fifth is when it resolves. That is the, the five to one relationship. And actually, we make this seventh chord because in a major key, the natural seventh, the seventh that is native to the key on the dominant chord is a major triad plus a minor seventh. I'll play the seventh chords for you. There's the two, three, four. Here it comes. Do you hear that? That's the dominant seven chord. It has 
And the way I voiced it now, the diminished fifth is going to resolve. But I'm going to go on. Here's the sixth chord, here's the seventh chord, and here's the repeat of the Tommy chord. This secondary dominant, particularly if we render the minor chord into a major form and add the dominant seventh of that particular chord, is really, really strong. And you hear that in all kinds of progressions. It's so much fun. Say we have this progression. C, A minor, D minor. These are native keys, chords, to the key of C. Um, G, C. What if we go to an E minor? A minor, D minor, and back to G, and then of course it would go back to C. So this is a progression entirely native to the key of C. Winding around these chords in the key of in the key of uh, C, but what would we do to make this A minor a dominant quality? We would make it major. You're adding if you're writing out music with a melody or arranging. Of course, you have to add the C sharp to this, which is an accidental and a chromatic note in the scale. But we can do that. And what if we? want to make this into a dominant quality, we now have to add the F sharp to the D chord. And here's our G. And just for fun, let's make all of these sevens. E7, seven, we're going to make every one of these a dominant quality, a secondary dominant. Uh, D7. G7, back to C. Here's what it's going to sound like. I'll play it churchy first. That's not very churchy. And, and um, it's not likely you're going to hear a progression that has all secondary dominance, but you could, as a matter of fact, if you started on, this is so fun, I love this one. If you started on C and made it a seventh, it would lead to F because they all go up a four, a perfect four. If we made F7, where's it gonna go? B flat. We make this B flat goes to E flat, goes to A flat, uh, goes to D flat, goes to G flat. And now we're going to switch here to sharps because this is an inharmonic key and they're exactly the same G flat to F sharp. Let's come over here. We're going to start with F sharp. Up a fourth and F sharp goes to B, B7 up a fourth goes to E, E7 up a fourth to A, A to D, B to G, and look at that, we're back home. And we've covered all 12 possible keys. Uh, the other, the one more concept I want to give to you today and this has to do, particularly if you're arranging or if you're improvising, and I need a staff for this. If you're writing music 
and I write a C chord to an F chord to a C chord to a G chord back to a C chord. These are our three uh, major chords. in the key of C. I've covered all my bases regarding the chords, but it's most unsingable. If you're singing the soprano line, look what you're singing. If you're singing the alto line, you've got to hit these middle notes. And if you're singing the tenor line, You've got to hit these bottom notes. You're never going to sing them, and you're never going to be able to put it in, keep it in tune. So instead of um, jumping to a root, another root position chord, since we've got a C in the F chord, keep the C here, and you've got a beautiful voice leading exchange of chords. And the G there's also a G in the C chord, so let's keep the G here and let's move the other notes here and then come back to the C here and listen to what you have then. That is called voice leading. If you're a soprano singer, da, 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 kind of a boring line, but very singable. If you should what? I was going to ask you, what was the light bulb moment that you had? You oh. described a light bulb moment. Oh, when I realized that the that the that the dominant chord, you could make any chord dominant. Oh, yeah. That is a yeah. light bulb moment. Yeah. Great. Yeah, any chord can be made dominant. And it moves up a fourth. It has that really strong tendency. Thank you. Oh, I guess I didn't make that clear. But that's what we were talking about were dominant chords. Thanks for joining us for these music videos. Thanks to Cascadia. And we'll see you next time. Bye.